everyone. Thank you for joining me this week. I have a special surprise for you. Now, since it is OT month, I am offering free apps for you to study and increase your knowledge. Down below, you'll see links and apps that you can download and use while studying for the boards. This week's topic is on how to study for the NPCOT exam during quarantine. Here are the subtitles that we'll go through for today. Have a plan, to-do list, one topic a week, how to study, ways to reduce anxiety. Pray and lastly, stay calm. What is the plan? How do you know what the plan is for the next few weeks or months? I would say the only way you can study for your boards is actually having a schedule. I would suggest buying a planner at this time, or you can download free planners online and just write in all the important things that you need to do throughout the day. Plan for this week is to know your study style. Watch the video at the comfort of your home. You'll have weekly videos on different topics of my PowerPoints that will be detailed to the point that will improve your study methods and knowledge. Now, what I would like you to do is have a clear mind before you watch my videos. When I say have a clear mind is by meditating. Make sure you meditate and close your eyes when you do this. You go to a place that's really quiet, dark, and you can call it your quiet spot. Just sit down on the floor. Have your hands like this and your legs crossed like a pretzel. And just close your eyes and think of positivity and think of being one with yourself. And taking away all the stress. Take away all of the stress. Think about it, just take it away, okay? I will further go into this in my later slides. So for now, have that in mind. Now, what's important when you study? When you study for the boards or just have a study routine, you always make sure that you have a paper where you write all the things that are important and all the things that are not important. So you start with the list that's really important. For example, I wrote, such as watching your children, taking a break in between studying and self-care tasks. So what's important for you? Right now, you're focusing on your boards and passing it. What you do now, write down three most important things for you. Three most important things. Like for me, the three most important things is to exercise, eat healthy, and at least study two hours a day. What are your three most important things? How to study. Before we begin on how to study, there is one thing in particular that I want you to see. I will also post it below under my YouTube video. I found an assessment online that's called Learning Style Inventory. 
what kind of learner you are. Either you are a visual learner, auditory learner, or tactile learner. The assessment has 24 item survey, which is not timed. And you respond to each statement to the best of your ability. Now I will show it to you. So here it is. The learning style inventory is really good for you. I'll tell you why. It'll give you a better idea of what kind of learner you are and how you can prepare for the test. So here are a few options. Like for instance, like number one says, I can remember best about a subject by listening to a lecture that includes information, explanation, and discussions. Then it goes all the way down to yeah, 24 questions. Well, it's not 24 questions, 24 options here. Then there's a scoring procedure where it tells you where you stand. Then there's a learning styles assessment, which I was mentioning before. This one specifically goes into each topic, such as visual, auditory, and tactile, which is kinesthetic. So a visual learner would be able to remember things when they write it down. A visual learner would be better focusing in a really quiet area. A visual learner would be able to look at pictures and write the information next to the picture and be able to remember it. Auditory, how do, they, how do they study or how do they learn? They rather listen and learn than look. Kinesthetic learners, what do they do? I'll show you. So this is where the scores are. So this is what kinesthetic learners do. Okay. I gotta do this. Okay. I usually like to practice things in real life. So I'll use this and I'll practice. And I'll remember this is a stethoscope. Stethoscope, that's just an example. Now I'll show you another example. This is the measuring tape. We use it to test for edema, to defigurate, right? Especially when they have a wound. Here is the rest. It says here, sound hints for auditory learner. They like to read books loud to themselves. Summarize what was read. Brainstorm with others, form study groups. Meet with their classmates. This is for someone who's a visual learner like me. Take notes, make pictures, graphs and charts. Use flashcards, which I'll show you mine. This is my flashcards I made for myself. And different topics that I need to go over the next selling. Like I have Ranches Los Amigos scale, all in one index card. 
different colors for different purpose. First color is blue because I'm writing different levels of Ranchos Los Amigos. Then the green one says what is happening in each scale. And the purple mentions the level of independence. After that, I write what you can do in each stage. Like what's the treatment? Another thing that I would use since I'm a visual learner, or you can be a visual learner and also gain from this, is use a boogie board. A boogie board is great for writing down things that come to mind. For instance, let's say I mentioned Ranchos Las Amigos, I could write RLA scale. So level one, what do they have? Level one, they're in complete coma. No response. That's how you write it. Okay. Now for someone, like I said, who's a kinesthetic learner, you need to actually do things physically to remember it. When you study, make sure that your desk and the area that you're studying in is clean and clutter-free. First and foremost, you need to stay organized. Why? You're asking me why? Well, researchers say and show that having a clear workspace will give you a clear mind and productivity. Study what you know and don't know, but I would mention studying more of what you don't know so you could increase your knowledge and improve your topics that you feel really weak in and strengthen it. So factual knowledge is important. Here is a calendar for the month of April. I was thinking that if you were to start studying, let's say since today is April 14, I would say start studying any day that you feel comfortable. And from that day, you need to come up with a short-term goal and a long-term goal. I have one planned out for you. I'll show it to you right now. Give me a second. So here I have a whiteboard. I don't know if you could see this. You know what? I'll hold it like this. Short term goal. Nathan will be able to study two out of four hours every day to improve study strategies by being organized and well prepared within six weeks. That's a short term goal. Now, his long term goal is Nathan will be able to improve study strategies by focusing, concentrating, and increasing test-taking tolerance within three months. That's the example I used. So I want you to make one for yourself where you're able to have a set goal. And when you reach it, you tell yourself, wow, I was able to do it. I can do this. I can pass my boards. I can set a schedule. I can understand the material better by thinking positive. You need to have a positive thinking and you'll get far. You'll become an OTR. An OTR will make a change in this world. Okay? So keep that in mind. Here's a cartoon that shows a guy who's sitting by his desk that's fully cluttered. It says here, 
Now, where did I put that? How to keep your desk tidy memo. Well, can't concentrate when you have a messy desk. All right, so how to study. Study in a place that is clutter free. Clear your space. Make sure your room or desk area has enough light for you to stay focused. Empty your wall or study by a wall that's clear without any pictures or anything. Even your vision board can be there because you need to have a clear white wall. Okay. Now use your whiteboard or chalkboard to memorize or understand the concept. Stay organized. And make sure you have a binder or a folder with all your topics. I will show you mine. All right, so what I do is I usually um, take folders that are empty. I bought these in Staples, really convenient, really, really convenient. And I take a post-it, put it right here where you can read it. It says other topics and wheelchair sitting and positioning. And then just put all my PowerPoints inside. I have them printed out actually. And then I'll just go through it. Yep, that's what I do. Different topics, like I said. Other topics where, for instance, it says evaluation, what types of evaluations do you do? interventions for assistive technology devices, for someone with auditory impairments, compensatory techniques, recognition, interventions. Um, then I have another folder that's thicker because it's, it's really detailed. The PowerPoint I made is really detailed. So this one is on neurodegenerative disease. I would suggest either having a binder with dividers and color code them so you know what topics each divider is. Or you can always use folders as your option to keep them organized. Materials you may need for studying. A blank piece of paper, a pencil, pen, or highlighter. You can also have colored pens where like I showed you an example of my index card. Just write it out and it sticks. If you're a visual learner, this helps a lot. You keep it more organized. Sticky notes, textbooks, notes from school, folders or binders, which I showed you as an example. Okay, ways to reduce your anxiety. What is one way you can reduce anxiety? Well, I would say meditate. Like I said earlier, you need a place where it's dark and quiet. You won't have any noise and you stay focused. You close your eyes. You fold your legs into a pretzel and just take away the stress, become one. You can play music if you like during this time to so just become one and disconnect from the world and focus on yourself. Focus on the breathing and focus on passing the boards. 
for 10 minutes. If you do this on a daily basis, you'll become more motivated and you'll get to your goal. Now, I would also suggest doing all these three. These are optional. If you have no medical condition, I would suggest doing yoga for 30 minutes every morning before you start doing anything. Every single day, do 30 minutes of yoga, then have breakfast, and then make sure you study at least two hours a day. Don't forget, take breaks in between. You need those breaks so you can refocus. If you study straight through without taking a break, you will feel tired. Don't burn yourself out while studying. Remember, increase your endurance on a daily basis and your tolerance for studying. Now exercise is also optional. You can exercise for 30 minutes every morning or three times a week to improve your blood circulation, increase the dopamine levels, and you'll just be able to stay focused. Lastly, bathe in a bubble bath for 30 minutes. When you bathe in a bubble bath for 30 minutes, you, you feel really, really calm. You feel all the stress coming out or anxiety. It's as if you're taking yourself to a mini vacation. What you could do is have bubble bath with those bomb baths in it or play music that makes you feel relaxed and calm. Let's listen to the music. Close your eyes. And just unwind. Listen to the music. Okay, open your eyes. Welcome back. Now I'll pause the music. Here is the website. I'll, I'll post it down below. It's www.lifehacker.com. Then I also wanted to show you the 10 ways to eliminate stress or anxiety without alcohol. All right, so Stress is one of those words we hear all the time. And we think, what are some healthy ways or healthy habits we can use to reduce stress? And here, we give you different options. I will show you, hold on a second. So meditation is one of the options I gave you. You can also do breathing exercises, um, which I'll mention later, mindfulness, which also ties back to meditation and yoga, positive affirmations, which is really important. Think about positive, positive. Think, I can do this. I know I can pass. 
get active, which is like exercising. I mentioned that earlier. Listen to music, which I just showed you. Keep a gratitude journal. You can always get a small journal. I have one where I write down things I appreciate on a daily basis. I appreciate the fact that I can share my knowledge with you. And I'm glad I can help people who are struggling or who have difficulties studying during this time. I know it's not easy, but we're here to motivate each other. Sleeping is really important. I mentioned self-care. You get help. If you're really overstressed. Let's go back. Prayer. Always ask God to help you pass in the morning or at night. What I mean is, pray to God. You don't have to read any book. Just say with your own words, God, I appreciate everything I have. I appreciate living, being able to breathe. Can you please let me pass the boards? Let me be able to stay focused. Please, God. Let me be able to pass with full force. Then you can pray from, also you can pray from anywhere at any time. God is listening. Just show him you are willing to put in the effort to pass. Lastly, stay calm. You can do this. You already graduated from your program and passed all of your classes. This is just one last stepping stone becoming an OCR or a CODA. You're going to get through this by practicing. Now practice makes perfect and you know your material really, really well by practicing. Um, take a deep breath as if you are smelling the roses and breathe out as if you are blowing your candles out on your birthday. So let's try this together. Breathe in as if you're smelling the roses. Let's go. Breathe in. And breathe out as if you're blowing out candles. Here is the page for all the information I've used in these PowerPoints. This is the reference page. So thank you so much for watching. Please share, like, and comment below. Bye.